Hi, Lee Phillips. Yeah, I'm an attorney. It's kind of good I'm an attorney some of the time. I uh, had a case with the IRS recently, and I'm going to call this video IRS extortion, because that's exactly what they tried to do to me. What they did is Christie's had ALS for five years. She died very recently, a couple of weeks ago. But we had HSA, Health Savings Account, and a lot of you may have Health Savings Account. It's great. It's a way to make 7500 whatever it is, dollars of your medical expenses for a couple tax-free each year if you have a little company. You put the 7000 in, it's a deduction to the company, and you can spend it on your medical, and you don't have to report that as income. And it's a lot better than trying to deduct medical expenses from your 1040 form. You can't do that. You're up against the 10% of adjusted gross income before you even get to deduct the first dollar. So if I've got $100,000 in income in my AGI, then I've got to expend $10,000 in medical deductions, and then the next thousand above the 10,000 I can deduct, but I can only deduct one of those thousand those eleven thousand dollars whereas if it's an HSA I get to just totally pay the first seven five or whatever it is it changes each year uh, tax-free it's a deduction to my company not income to me it's just water under the bridge so in 2015 the IRS just challenged me they made their three-year statute of limitations on my return and they just said nope we're not going to let you have any of your medical expenses in the HSA we don't believe that they are uh, real expenses well that's ridiculous I have every dime of expenses receipted everything else I can tell you exactly what it is and where it goes and yes we spent seven thousand five hundred dollars and we spent that in January so I know where all the receipts are. They're certainly medically related. So, okay, IRS should be able to figure this one out. We box all the receipts up. We send them into the IRS. We get a letter back, nope, disallowing all HSA expenses. They're not medical. Wait a minute. Now, Ben in my office is a prior IRS special agent, special auditor dude, and we also have in the office, or at least the office next door, uh, former head of the Western Division of the IRS, criminal division. So we kind of know something about the IRS around here in the office. And what they said is, is this is extortion from the IRS. Your next appeal is to tax court. And so you're going to go down and you're going to get a lawyer and you're going to go to tax court. No problem. Except when you go down, the lawyer says, no problem, I'd love to do that for you. It will be a $10,000 retainer. And you're going to scratch your head and say, no, wait a minute. I owe the IRS $3,000. That's what they're claiming. And my lawyer just asked me for $10,000. I'm going to spend $10,000 to get $3,000 back. I guess I'll just pay the IRS off and lick my wounds. Um, that's extortion. And these guys that work in the IRS say, oh yeah, they do that all the time to people. Well, we finally, we fought them and we went to tax court. And funny thing is, yep, all of the, uh, all of the expenses were allowed and there was no additional tax owed or anything else. But you've now spent 10 grand at your lawyer's office to get 3,000 off your back with the IRS. When I sent in all the receipts the first time, they say, oh, we, they just trash them. Uh, they just throw them in the garbage. Well, yeah, but that's still extortion from the IRS. I hope you don't have the experience I've had, but apparently it's not uncommon to be extorted by the boys.